So the next question in that section B was outline how Hancock et al. study on language of psychopaths links to the psychedelic perspective. Support your answer with evidence from the study. So in referencing Hancock's, in Hancock's study, uh, candidates may draw upon. So we've got ego development. So how the ego is, is developing um, in a person to kind of balance between what the id wants and what the superego wants. Uh, we've got here use of Rorschach test. So Rorschach is ink blots. So the fact that ink blots were used in the Hancock study, if you read the journal article, it details that. Um, we've got, now this one's a particular one that's on the slide, so it says psychological distancing. They describe their crimes in a way that distances themselves from the victim. So they use a lot of kind of, um, you know, different ways of describing their crimes. So it's very kind of... Um, not really describing it in a person way, more kind of like past tense. Um, so they, they distance themselves psychologically from that. So that could be what could be classed as a defense mechanism um, because, you know, they're protecting their kind of um, conscious mind from that. Um, we've got here basic and thrill seeking drive. So in their kind of unconscious mind, they might have these drives which make them then, you know, do what they do. And then we've got language use being in all likelihood beyond conscious control. So again, that's another easy one. So the best ones to use are the psychological distancing and the um, language not being under conscious control. So it's kind of unconscious control. So, you know, things kind of like, you know, Freudian slips, things coming out and um, they're kind of saying things that they perhaps, you know, don't kind of mean, you know, they don't mean to use the language that they're using. It's not kind of under their control. And we've got a possible answer on the mark scheme as well. So it says the psychedelic perspective believes that human behaviour often comes from a part of our mind that we have no conscious awareness of, our unconscious mind. So that's kind of like the old one, it's kind of like the theory of it. Uh, and then the application would be, in Hancock's study it was found that psychopaths struggled to describe an emotional event and seemed much more emotionally detached in their language compared to non-psychopaths. Now to make that really, really good, if you put a finding in there as evidence, you've covered yourselves and it's a really strong point. So there needs to be some kind of finding in there. Um, Hancock concludes that language differences between psychopaths and non-psychopathic homicide offenders are likely beyond conscious control, which links to the key concept of the psychedelic perspective. So again, they've used the two that I suggested for you to use because they're the easiest two to talk about, uh, but you can talk about the other ones. There's two points made there, which is what gets the uh, two marks each, which makes the four marks. On the banding on the right hand side, for four marks it says response demonstrates good application of psychological knowledge and understanding. Uh, so that's kind of the application in terms of the psychodynamic perspective assumption. So the, the questions build on each other, it's 1A and 1B. So you kind of need to know um, the assumptions of the approaches to then be able to link the studies to them. It says explicit links are made to how the study supports or fits the features of the perspective, which as the answer showed it does, it talks about how the language of the psychopath is not in conscious control, so there's an application there. Uh, so that's how you get four marks for that study.